Hello YouTube, I'm Pedro from the Wicked Cut team. Now that we have concluded the videos on materials and the standard shader, it's now time to move to another feature of Unity, this time physics. On the next couple of videos, we will talk about several physics components that you can find in Unity and how they work. Today we are going to start with the rigid body. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, and if you want more Unity 5 tutorials, remember to subscribe to our channel. So, right now we still have the same scene with our truck and our cube. Uh, in fact, I am actually going to delete our cube because we won't need it anymore. So, like I said, we have our scene with our truck. Um, now, notice that our truck is basically in the middle of nothing, so it's the only game object that we have in our scene besides our directional light and our main camera. And in fact, let me actually center the game camera to our, to our view, so alignment view right here, perfect. So. Now that we have everything set, you will notice that if I press play, let's just hold on for a minute while the engine starts. Okay, so if I press play, as you guys can see, basically nothing happens. The, the truck says stay still. However, um, this should not be happening because on real life, if the truck is in the middle of the air, the truck will, would fall, right? So, we want our truck to fall if it has nothing under it. Basically, we want to apply physics to it, uh, in, in, in this particular case, the gravity. So, in order to apply physics, like gravity, to our game objects, we need a component called a uh, rigid body. So, you can set a rigid body to receive forces and torque in order to make your game objects move in a realistic way. Using forces on a rigid body to manipulate the game object creates a very different feel and look than adjusting the transform component that you have right here directly. Usually, you shouldn't influence the rigid body and the transform on the same, at the same time because this may get you weird effects, so as rule of thumb, you must choose which one will get you better results and use that for your specific case and stick with it, so trying to keep this simple, if you actually want to use a rigid body uh, to move your game object, you basically don't change the values of the transform by script and if you want to use a transform to change the position or the rotation of the game object uh, by script, you don't use the rigid, you don't apply forces to the rigid body. Otherwise, they will conflict each other, and you may get uh, really weird effects that you don't want. Now, the biggest difference between using the transform and the rigid body is the use of forces. So, rigid bodies can receive forces and torque, but transforms cannot. You can translate and rotate a transform, but this is not the same as using physics. Adding forces or torque to the rigid body will actually change the object position and rotation of the transform component. So this is why you should only be using one or another. Again, the, if you use both, you will have weird effects because you are saying something with the transform, but the rigid body, at the same time, if this is a getting forces applied to it, it's changing the transform at the same time your script is trying to change the values, so we'll get a big mess out of there. So changing the transform while using physics uh, could actually cause you problems with collisions and other calculations. So before we have a rigid body to our truck, let's first organize our assets hierarchy. First. I'm going to rename our loadmaster cargo object to mesh. Let me just change the name here. 
and now I'm going to check if he's on position 000 with rotation 000 and yes everything is in place with scale 111 so perfect and now what I'm actually going to do is to create a new game object this time an empty game object create empty I'm going to make sure that it also is in position 0, 0, 0 with 0 in all axis for rotation and 1 in all axis for scale and I'm going to call it loadmaster loadmaster cargo Next, I'm going to select my mesh object and I'm going to drag it over Loadmaster Cargo and make it a child of Loadmaster Cargo. Now, why I'm actually doing this may not be clear now, but um, on the next couple of videos, while we start working with colliders, um, and we will also work with joints, um, You'll need this type of hierarchy if you want to use uh, joints, for example, in the wheels in order to make the truck uh, move. So, I'm already preparing the, the truck to that, so that's why I'm actually creating this hierarchy instead of using the components directly on the original game object. So, what I'm actually going to do now is select now that you have the mesh object child of loadmaster cargo is to select the loadmaster cargo which is the parent game object and i'm actually going to add a rigid body component to it now i go to add component i'm going to search for rigid body and as you guys can see we have two rigid bodies um, right here so we have two types of rigid bodies, the rigid body and the rigid body 2D. For now we are going to focus on rigid body and leave the rigid body 2D for when we start working with 2D in Unity. So I'm going to select rigid body. Okay. And now with the rigid body attached to my uh, game object we can see on the inspector that has several components and we are going to talk about them a little bit so the first parameter is mass okay so here you can define the mass of the object that uh, has attached that is attached to the rigid body for now we are, we are not going to change this value but keep in mind that the difference between the masses of rigid bodies in the same scene should not be greater than a hundred times otherwise when we are actually applying forces or we have collisions between objects um, you may have problems with physics so keep in mind that the difference between the masses should not be greater than a hundred now the next component drag sets how much air resistance affects the object when the object is being moved by forces so zero means no air resistance and if you actually change this to infinity um, what happens is that the object will stop immediately so right here you can see zero means no damping and infinity will make the object stop so angular drag is the next parameter indicates how much air resistance affects the object when rotating from torque so just like drag zero means no air resistance but keep in mind that while you can stop the movement by setting drag to infinity you cannot stop um, the rotation of the game object by setting the angular drag to infinity okay so that only applies to drag next uh, you have gravity and as you may expect this applies gravity 
to the game object you can turn gravity off or on by default is on in our specific case we want gravity so we'll let this parameter enabled next we have a parameter called kinematic that if enabled the object will not be driven by physics in the physics engine so it will be completely ignored by physics and can only be manipulated by its transform now this can be very useful uh, for example for moving platforms or for example um, you may want to reset all the forces that are affecting the object and this is actually a very quick way to do this is to turn its kinematic on and you turn it on you reset all the forces and you turn it off again and you can apply new forces without getting weird effects so this can be quite useful next we have interpolate and here you can uh, you have several options to set the jerkiness of the rigid body movement so we can set it to none meaning that will be no interpolation you can set it to interpolate this will smooth the transform based on the previous frame or you can set it to extrapolate which will smooth the transform by estimating the transform of the next frame right so let's leave it to none next on collision detection um, we can set the type of collision detection we want for our rigid body so here you can set it to discrete continuous or continuous dynamic so this is basi this basically this is used to prevent fast moving objects from passing through other objects without the collisions being detected so you can set it to this to, like i said to discrete continuous or continuous dynamic with discrete selected all collisions with other objects will be discrete with continuous the rigid body will use discrete detection with dynamic objects and continuous collision detection on static game objects. However, keep in mind that this type of collision may have a big impact on performance, so I do not recommend to use this option. And finally, with continuous dynamic, the collision will use continuous for most uh, collisions with game objects. Let's keep it to discrete. And finally, on constraints, which is the last parameter, you can set constraints to rotation and position, and set on the on, on a specific axis. So, for example, if I turn freeze position X, what happens is that all the forces applied will never change the value that I have on the X in my transform position. For example, if you don't want any type of rotation in the object after the force is being applied, you can turn all this on, and as you act, and the rotation will not be applied. Now, as you guys seen, have seen before, the, the truck was falling, and well, actually was not falling. And now that you have our gravity turned on, if we press play. The truck will fall like was expected in the real world. Now, to give you a quick example on the constraints and how you can use them, for example, let's say that we don't want our um, game object to change position in the y axis. I simply go here to constraints and turn constraint on y axis on. And if I press play now, we still have the gravity on, but the game object will not move because we have the constraint turned on if I turn this off it will stop right the same here with gravity so if I turn this off we have no gravity uh, as you guys can see we have gravity right here and oh sorry I forgot to turn this off okay and if I turn kinematic, you see the movement completely stopped it. And if I turned it off, uh, it will continue to fall because forces will be applied again. Okay, so 
this is basically what is kinematic do uh, okay guys so basically this is are the basis of the rigid body component on the following videos we will focus on colliders and we will return from time to time to the, the rigid body to change some values the idea here is after this physics module which will cover several physics components is to have a fully functional truck that you actually can control using your keyboard um, and that you can drive using physics so this is the main goal for the next couple of videos where we are going to explore physics and do some scripting that we have not done yet so i hope you guys enjoyed it and until next video have a nice day